Hey, and welcome back to our data mining with Azure Machine Learning Studio Series brought to you by Data Science Dojo. Okay, so today we're going to go ahead and create an experiment. Uh, our first experiment, we're going to go ahead and ex explore the experiment workspace. We're going to look at the idea of modules and how they work within Azure ML. And then we're going to see how we can import and export data within Azure ML. Okay, so this is where you should be. You should be inside of your Azure ML Studio workspace. Um, to create a new, basically, experiment or a, a new anything, you can go to this new button on the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. So click this new button. So notice we can create a new and then blank experiment, but this is where we could create anything else that's new. So a new notebook, new project, new module, new data set. So this is where we would import a local file, for example. All right, so let's go ahead and create a blank experiment here. But notice that um, also, did you see that there were a bunch of these other templates that we could have copied as well? So if there's, if you if you needed any help on learning how to do something like I don't know preventative maintenance, you can go ahead and clone one of those things. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close this box right up here. So you see this X button? I'm gonna close it. All right. So this is our experiment workspace. Okay, and notice it gives us some hints as to how this works. And notice that it operates by some kind of module connecting other modules in some kind of workflow type fashion. And if you've ever used Visio before, it looks like a Visio that only flows from top to bottom. Okay. So uh, on the left will be your control panel. If you don't see that, uh, you can expand it left and right over here. And let's take a look at our saved data sets real quick. So this is if you if you bring in data, this is where it would be under my data sets. Um, I have a few data sets already. I think it's some test data right here. Um, but it also brings you with some basically some sample data sets. Then uh, this is initiated with your workspace. So go ahead and I'm going to drag in the adult census income data set. So notice that all I did was just dragged it in. So clicked, held on to it, and moved it into the workspace. And notice that this, in, this object is representing the entirety of the data set. Okay? And notice that it has a node on, 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 on the bottom here. So it says, if I hover over it, it says data set. Okay? And, and the idea is the data, comes, the data that is inside of this is coming out of this node right here, so this, this bottom node. So nodes on the bottom uh, of, of the modules always represent uh, uh, the, the thing that's coming out of the module, okay? So if I right click on this, okay? Um, for those of you who are using Mac, um, you I think you would just use a double finger light tap on this node. Um, I do recommend getting a mouse though to use Azure ML. It will help a lot. Azure ML is a lot of right clicking, okay? So I can right click on this and I can say I can download a data set or I can visualize the data set. For the most part, you want to visualize the data set. So notice I can right click and visualize. So this will give me a window that will show me the first, um, I think, 100 rows of this data. Set. So this is just a real, real simple snapshot of the data. And I think the first 100 columns of the data set, even though there's not 100 columns. So this is a data set that we can see about the census of uh, census and demographic information about various uh, people. So each row represents a person. So notice I can just click on on uh, on any column. I can get kind of a you know very light descriptive stats of these the the what the data in this column. So notice there's seven unique values in this column, and then I can see that married is 46 percent of the data with 14,976 elements, right? Uh, and, and likewise with the rest of them. If it's a numeric column, so notice I can see the what what data type it is right here by just by just looking at it. So notice that if it's numeric, it will give me some other uh, measurements of spread as well. So for example, uh, mean, median, min, max, standard deviation, and and things like that. So I can close this window. Okay, so that is a data set that's already inside of this uh, 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 inside of this workspace. All it did was drag it in. So notice I can drag in other data sets as well. So it also supports selecting. So notice I can just select multiple data sets and then I can right click and hit this delete button or I can uh, select all and then on my keyboard I can hit delete as well and it will remove all of that at the same time. So I can go ahead and drag that back in. Okay. Now if I want to save this data set Notice that there's a bunch of really cool things on the left-hand side. So these are all the tools, the transformation, the manipulation tools that you will use to your data set. So notice that 
if I go to data format conversions here, I can convert this data object to a CSV file, right? A comma separated file, values file, wherein I can then feed that into a SQL database or open it in Excel or a notepad or something like that. So notice, I, all I did was uh, took this, held it down from the output node and dragged it into the input node of this guy. So notice that the top node is always the input node, okay? So data going in. Okay, and notice that there's data going out of this as well, right? So though it goes in, some kind of function or operation happens here. So this operation just has to be converting to a CSS. But you notice that I can't, if I right click on this node, I can't do anything yet, right? And that's because it hasn't run yet. So go down here, there's this run button. So I will click on run and it's gonna go ahead and execute this module. So everything in this workspace, it's gonna execute. Notice that once I have this green checkbox, it means the operation is complete for this module and whatever's in this module, the, the results have been cached and then I can right click and then consume the output. So I notice I can then right click and say download on this data set, okay? So then I can, this is how I export data from inside of Azure Mode. If I wanna download it to a local file. Now keep in mind, we're using a cloud-based tool, and sometimes we're using a cloud-based tool because we have access to huge amounts of data. It might not be good to download those huge amounts of data to your local computer. So notice I can just uh, open this up in my notepad, right? And then, or I can open up in Excel, whatever you wish. So that is how I export data. Notice that there's also a TSV here, and notice that I can rearrange my workspace and then also tell the adult census income by, by, by clicking and holding on and dragging the connector to the convert to TSV. So notice the convert to TSV output or input node, it turns green, right? It means that it's a supported, it, it's a supported data type that it will accept. So notice that if I hover over the, out, the, the input node of the convert to TSV, it tells you what data type it's expecting to be passed into it. So notice I have a hover, it says it wants a data set, data type, okay? And if I, over, if I hover over the output of the adult census income object, notice I get a data set object. So notice that that's why it turns green, because it's willing to accept that as an output, okay? As an input <coughs> parameter. So now notice that this has a check mark and this does not, which means this has no results in it, it has not been executed. It is a blank set of instructions right now. It's like a blueprint, okay? Nothing has been done yet. But this side, it's been done, okay? So notice I can hit this run button again, okay? And then it's gonna go ahead and refresh my workspace. And now I have one side converted to TSV and one side converted to CSV. And notice how they are now both done, okay? So I can also export my data. So if I, so there's a, the, the top left hand, hand corner, there's lots and lots of tools inside of Azure. I can manipulate data by adding columns, rows, all that good stuff. I can do feature selection. All the machine learning models are in here. So really everything you can ever need for data machine learning is on the left hand toolbar. So there's too many things to actually look for itself. So you can search for them instead. So. If I want to export data, that is the export data module. So notice how I typed in export up here. I select export data and I drag it right into the workspace. And notice I can connect the export data. Okay, and this is just good style, by the way. And I like to con uh, I like to make sure everything that uh, that is gonna be on the same level means that you know these things are executed in the same step. They're just diverging now. So I don't want it to look like this. Okay, that's that's a little bit of bad style because it makes a user, right, if you're sharing this workspace or if you come back to this workspace after not having worked on it for some time, it might seem that it's executing these in order, but it's actually not. It's, it's actually executing all of these at the same time, okay? So if I click on this export data module, notice it says value required. That always means that there is some kind of levers and knob that, knob that I can go ahead and tweak, and that can be done. So once you click on it, so notice it's highlighted in blue. <clears throat> I can see on the right-hand side, a window pops up, right? This is the properties window. This is the thing, the parameters I can tweak for this export data module. And that's true of every module that has some kind of parameter, okay? So basically what it's asking me is like, all right, what do I, where do I want to export my data? And I can export my data to quite a few places. I can export my data to a Hive query. Basically, I can insert it into a Hadoop table. Okay, I can do an Azure SQL database, I can do an Azure table, or I can do an Azure blob storage. Okay, so notice I can also 
um, delete this as well. I can also delete the connector. So if I click on this connection, I can right click and I just delete it. Same thing with this. All right, so let's talk about how do I also import data. So in, 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 in this data set over here, the adult census income data set, it's actually from the UCI repository. So we're gonna go ahead and go open up Google uh, and type in UCI adult census data, okay? And that's gonna bring us to the original data set. So if you click on this link right here, it should be come from archive.ics.uci.edu. Uh, okay, I think it stands for University of California. Uh, all right, so, and then if you scroll to the very top, there is a button that says data folder, all right? So this is the, the page that's hosting um, uh, the, the basically the information about the data, but the actual data itself is inside of this folder. All right, and we're gonna see if we can read in this file right here. So data, adult.data, okay? So this is the raw file itself, okay? Notice it's very messy right here, okay? So the idea is if I, if I, if I right click and copy this URL, I can bring in a module called the import data module and read it directly in from the URL. Okay, so the import data module, if I click on it, notice that there, it says value required. I need to specify where do I want this data to come in from. So I can launch what's called this wizard right here, or I can select it manually. Okay, so the wizard uh, basically pops up a window and asks you, what do you want to choose? Okay. Um, but I prefer this method over here, which is I just want to select, okay, I want to read in the data from an HTTP. I want to paste it in, okay? And now it's going to ask me what format is it? Is it a CSV or a TSV? So basically, I notice that there's commas here. So that means it is a comma separated value, so it's a CSV. And does it have headers? Um, no, it does not, okay? So notice that this check box, if I do have a header, I will click this right here, all right? And then this cache, use cache result. What this means is every time you hit the run button, it's gonna act, try to access this URL and try to reread the file in. But you and I know that this is a static and not changing data file. So if we know that, we will just use say use cache results. So it read it in once and never read it again, okay? Which is really nice. But if this is dynamic data, like sales data, right, stock portfolio data, data that's changing every day, every second, um, you don't want to use this. The idea is you want the workspace to be dynamic and fetch new data every time and refeed it into your current and existing data mining or data science pipelines, okay, which is really, really useful, especially if you're doing time series data. All right, so we're going to go ahead and paste our URL here, say, and with these following, uh, with the following, uh, specifications and we're going to hit the run button so this is going to go ahead and contact uh, this url right here and try to read in this data set for us now this might take a little bit of time it still it, uh, it has to also parse the data for us okay it's done so i can go ahead and right click now on the output of this and i can visualize it and it, go, it went ahead and read in all the data sets for us, all nice and dandy-like, okay? And notice that since we didn't have headers, it arbitrarily named these call one through call 15, okay? And I'll show you how to rename columns in a separate video, so don't worry about that. All right, so that is how you read in data from the internet. Um, the import data module also supports Hive queries, which is you can read from a Hadoop cluster, specifically, I think, HD Insight Hadoop clusters. Um, if they have a, a Hive table that's already existing, you can connect to an Azure SQL database. Um, you can connect to a document DB, which is a NoSQL database, or blob storage, okay? And... Uh, now, if you want to read it from a local file, okay, so let's, let's simulate a local file now. So I want to go into this data set, for example, right click it and say, just save as, right? Just save it to your local file. So I'm gonna go to my, I'm gonna save it to my desktop. But go ahead and save it wherever you want. So notice it says .txt. I don't want that. I actually want it to be read uh, as a CSV later. So I'm gonna save it as a .csv. So notice I'm saving it as a CSV because there's commas here, right? Um, if it's saved by tabs, then it's a TSV, okay? So it's gonna save it as a flat file for me. It's gonna save it to my desktop, okay? So if I wanna read in this local file, I wanna go back and see this new button on the bottom left-hand corner of my screen. I can click this new button, and when I hit this new button, I can go ahead and say new data set 
from local file. And then I can go ahead and choose uh, from my desktop that file that I just saved. So uh, adult.data.csv. And then I can, this is where I get to name the data set, right? So I can call this uh, some, whatever I want. So I'll call this true adult census data, right? And then notice if I want to overwrite an existing file, I can check this box right here. But this is a brand new data file, so I don't want to do that yet. And then this is where I select the, uh, the, the type of file it is. So if it is an Excel spreadsheet, I'll go ahead and save it as a, a uh, as an Excel spreadsheet, so .xls, but when I read it in, I can read it in as a CSV, and it'll parse the Excel spreadsheet just fine, okay? And also I can read in our data files, which is also really cool, so if you know R, that's also nice. All right, so I'm gonna save this as a, as a CSV, okay? And I can provide a description here, so if I go back to the UCI repository, I can basically just copy this abstract, so predict whether income exceeds 50K based upon census data, okay? So I can copy that and bring that in here. I'll just also set the source from UCI repository. I go ahead and save it. And now it's gonna go ahead and, and load that data in for me. Once the data is loaded in, it's gonna appear under the saved data sets, specifically under my data sets. All right, looks like it finished uh, uploading. Um, so right now, I, I, the data will appear under my data set. So you don't have to refresh anything. Um, so you just click on my data sets under save data sets, and you should see the data file that I just brought in, which I named true adult census data. So if I drag that in now, I can say right click and I can visualize it and notice that um, it read in the data set, but I think I also read it in wrong because notice that I didn't say uh, it, uh, uh, this file doesn't have headers, right? So I should have said that, but it's it's fine. You guys won't make that spooky mistake that I did. All right, and then uh, I think that's all the time we had today, and that's how you read in data sets from Azure ML. That's how modules work, and that's how you export data for out of Azure ML. Join us next time, and we'll start our real data mining project from, uh, uh, from start to finish, uh, starting next episode. Hey, if you like that video and you and you want to see more videos like this in the future, go ahead and like and subscribe, and I will look forward to seeing you at our boot camp.